Adora study, I think, was just clearly the most meaningful abstract that was presented at ASCO 2020 uh, in the plenary session. So this is a randomized phase three study uh, resected stage 1B through stage 3A, EGFR mutation positive non-small cell lung cancer, um, patients after surgery and appropriate adjuvant therapy, if it was felt appropriate, were then randomly assigned to up to three years of either osimertinib, the third generation EGFR inhibitor, or placebo. And then the uh, primary endpoint of the study was disease-free survival. Secondary endpoint was overall survival. Uh, the study fully accrued, so more than 660 patients were accrued. And um, we were not expecting to hear results from this for a number of years. Very interestingly, very shortly before the ASCO meeting took place, there was a press release saying that during an interim analysis, the study had been unblinded because it had already met its disease-free survival endpoint and therefore they felt it was not ethical to continue the trial. And then it snuck into the plenary session really with just a couple of weeks notice because it had come out. So we're all anxious to see the data. Essentially uh, what it showed, uh, so the primary endpoint was disease-free survival. It was evenly split between 1B stage two and stage three patients, but the primary endpoint was specifically for stage two and stage 3A patients, the highest risk patients for recurrence. And uh, the curve was actually quite breathtaking to see. I mean, there was a huge separation, uh, which we expected to see um, because we know from earlier trials that disease-free survival does tend to be prolonged by tyrosine kinase inhibitors. Um, but the, the two-year disease-free survival in the primary endpoint group of stage two and stage three patients was 90% at two years, still disease-free, compared to 44% in those who got the placebo. So almost a 50% absolute difference in uh, disease-free survival at two years, which widened at three years, but it was fairly immature with only about 22 months of follow-up. So um, they did also show a very, very early overall survival curve. There was no statistical significance to it because there hadn't been enough events, although already there was at least some split in favor of the osimertinib arm, but um, I would say that that was more of a titillation than it was really uh, objective data. So this will be very interesting. There's a lot of details from the study that we didn't get. Um, we did hear that while only 55% of people on the trial got adjuvant chemotherapy, there was just a brief mention in the oral presentation that um, very few stage 1B patients got chemo, which means that probably most of the people with stage 2 and stage 3A did get appropriate adjuvant chemotherapy. Um, that's something that was uh, mentioned as a possible criticism of the trial, but I don't think that's going to bear out as being particularly important. And uh, I think the biggest criticism of the trial in terms of whether it's practice changing now or not is that we don't yet know anything about whether this is truly going to improve the cure rate for patients with resectable early stage EGFR mutant lung cancer or whether it is going to at least lead to an overall survival difference. And it probably is going to be a few years until we're going to get that data. But we need to decide about it now, because it did meet its primary endpoint. There, I think, is a reasonable chance that the FDA may approve and make this available uh, for people, but because that was the, you know, the predetermined endpoint. And so now we have to discuss this with our patients. So is it worthwhile and meaningful to a patient to say that, you know, uh, in two years without treatment, your risk of having your cancer come back is more than 50% um, with just adjuvant chemotherapy. But if you were to take this pill, which has relatively limited side effects, it's pretty well tolerated, um, you have a 90% chance of not having the cancer come back in the next two years. Does that mean that you're going to be cured? Does that mean you're going to live longer? I can't answer those questions, but we don't have time to wait three years um, to find out if this is going to help you today. And so we'll have this discussion. We'll see if it's um, personally affordable to them because we don't know what the uh, insurance coverage will be for that. We'll see whether the side effects seem like something they could tolerate and whether that's a meaningful endpoint to them to delay their recurrence, knowing that it is, I think, very possible that this will lead to an increase in cures. Uh, we just can't say that for sure at this point. Um, I respect the opinion of people who might not think that this is strong enough data to use it right now, but I definitely think that it's worth discussing with patients today. And I do think that there are patients who will find this a meaningful enough change to um, choose to do it until we know for sure whether it's going to impact survival.